NASA goes to bat for SpaceX Starlink. Wow, let's talk about it. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Thank you for joining me for Tea Time. I hope you're joining me with your cup of tea, maybe a cup of coffee, hanging out, talking tech, talking photo, talking video. Today is a technology day. We're gonna be talking about SpaceX and NASA and what's going on over there. It seems that NASA is backing SpaceX Starlink. I guess going to bat for them. So I was reading an article about this and I wanna give you this news because it's pretty good news. This is going to increase speed, is also going to lower latency right across the board. And this is going to drastically affect the DTC service. So we're going to see faster speeds and lower latency when it comes to direct to sell. That is a major, major factor. And I'm sure the telcos, as I always say, are shaking in their boots. This is going to be big for them. Also, before the end of this video, I'm gonna give you a little bit of insider information that I just heard as of yesterday. Really, really cool stuff. Anyways, let's get into this article. But before I do, I wanna say that if you enjoyed the video, throw it a thumbs up. That's very helpful. Don't forget to subscribe. If you're not, if you are, thank you. Click this little notification button over here so when I go live when a new video comes out, you'll be notified of it immediately. If you haven't downloaded any of my eBooks, check them out, they're free. Go to jcristina.com forward slash books. And if you wanna say thank you for all of my hard work on this channel, there's a little thank you button down here. Thank you, YouTube, for giving that to us. Click on that, give a dollar or two if you like. If not, it's perfectly fine. The video is still free, either which way. <laughs> Consider becoming a member of the channel. That would be even better. And if you want more Starlink specific content, I put together over 150 videos over the last 45, 47 months just for you. I'll put a link over here. Don't click on it yet. Click on that link when you're done watching this video and you'll see, once again, a ton of helpful how-tos, tips, tricks, what to do, what not to do, what to buy, what not to buy. And of course, the why behind all of it. The why is what this channel has always been about. So let's get into this article. I'll give you my commentary. And then I want to hear from you down below in the comment area. If you don't want to put a comment down there, just put an emoji, a simple emoji. doesn't matter what it is. A rocket ship, a satellite, a poop emoji, whatever you like. I'm happy with any of it. So. SpaceX has received support from NASA in its proposal to orbit Starlink satellites about 200 kilometers closer to Earth. That's a lot. SpaceX wants permission to orbit its cellular Starlink satellites 340 to 360 kilometers around Earth, citing the benefits of reduced latency for the up-and-coming direct-to-cell Starlink service, that DTC service that I was talking to you guys about in yesterday's video. Check that out if you haven't watched it. Good stuff, really good stuff. The issue is that SpaceX wants to potentially orbit thousands of Starlink satellites below the International Space Station, which circles the Earth between an altitude of 360 and 470 kilometers. In 2022, NASA flagged the proliferation of Starlink satellites as a potential obstacle to sending missions to the International Space Station. But in a Tuesday letter to the FCC, the space agency said that it has been working with SpaceX on a, quote, visiting vehicle study to assess whether low orbiting satellites can operate below the space station in 300 kilometer orbits. Quote, given the progress made and the continued positive collaboration between SpaceX and NASA, NASA supports FCC action that would allow SpaceX to initially operate 400 satellites continuously in the 300 kilometer orbital shell. That is a really big deal, guys. 200 kilometers is massive. You're looking at lower latency and faster speeds right across the board. Very, very big deal. This support reflects the ongoing cooperation between both parties to ensure safe and effective satellite operations. But for now, it looks like NASA only wants to let SpaceX orbit the satellites closer to Earth on a trial basis. Its letter alludes to granting the company a, quote, special temporary authority to orbit the cellular Starlink satellites in the 300 kilometer orbits for 60 days, which SpaceX requested in May, quote, Upon completion of the visiting vehicle study, that's that study that they're doing, 
NASA will coordinate any change on the number of satellites it endorses in the 300 kilometer orbital shell, the space agency added in the letter. Still, the NASA letter is a win to SpaceX's efforts to upgrade the Starlink network by lowering the satellite's orbits, which could raise opposition from rival companies in addition to astronomers. Rival companies, absolutely. Astronomers, probably. But the rival companies are going to get pissed, just like I said in yesterday's video. Go watch it. Good video. They're going to be upset. This is going to be major because they're going to see lower latencies and faster speeds, more data, more data, more data, and they're going to get closer and closer to having a true cell tower in space where you are able to use your phone, an unmodified phone, speak to your friends or whatever on the top of a mountain somewhere with absolutely no signal, okay? It's absolutely unbelievable what's going on and these companies know it. They know it, the writing is on the wall, they don't know what they're doing. They're shucking and jiving to figure out how they're not going to go out of business. That's my personal opinion. So the article finalizes with this. Earlier this month, the company also made a new push with the FCC to operate nearly 30,000 second generation Starlink satellites, including in the 340 to 360 kilometer orbital shell or range. So 30,000 is what they requested. These are the version twos, but version threes are right around the corner. So we'll see what ends up happening with that. They'll probably have to do a modification to that request. Either which way, they're requesting up to 30,000. Now, how many satellites are currently operating? Thanks for asking me. We're looking at about 6,400 SpaceX Starlink satellites currently in operational orbit. So that is a lot. There's over 7,000, I think, up there or have been shipped up there and 6,400 operational. So there is a lot, but we're looking at 30,000. The cap or where they want to be is 43,000. That was the number that was proposed like, I guess now three and a half, four years ago, all right? 43,000. They're putting in their request right now for 30,000. So this is just going to continuously get bigger and bigger until they hit that magic number of 43,000. At that point, I mean, this network is going to be just unbelievable absolutely unbelievable now just like i promised you some insider information well the current fairing that little cone that's on the top of the falcon 9 rocket the one that houses the satellites that as it's being pushed through the atmosphere kind of shields it from any of that atmospheric condition like extreme heating well, that shell, once they get into orbit and they are now weightless, let's say, that thing breaks off and goes back to the Earth. And at that point, it exposes the satellites and those satellites are now able to be put into orbit. So that fairing can hold currently about 22, 21 to 22 satellites. I think the max they've ever stuffed in there is 23, but the norm is 21 to 22 satellites in that fairing. Now those satellites are the version two minis. They are bigger than the old versions. The old versions, which are the 1.5s, they're able to hold 60 plus of them in there. But we're not talking about 1.5s. We've passed that. The version two minis, 22, let's call it. Well, according to an insider source, they are redoing that fairing, the internals, and they're going to be able to house approximately 29 of these Starlink satellites. That is a really, really big deal. That signifies a 30, 32% increase in capacity. That is a lot. That is a big, big deal. That means there's going to be a lot more on orbit in a shorter period of time. So we're going to once again see that exponential rate of inclusion of additional satellites into orbit. This is a, this is massive because as we get more and more up there and it costs less and less for them to do so, this is going to reflect on their total cost. Remember, the total cost of putting each satellite into orbit is what they have to look at, not including all of the internet fees, but the placing those satellites into orbit, they have to look at that to calculate how much service costs. What are they going to charge for it? 
so that they not break even, but actually make some money on it. Because remember, SpaceX Starlink, the only reason for SpaceX Starlink originally was to be able to pay for Elon Musk's missions to Mars, right? His endeavor to be able to get people or species multiplanetary. That was the purpose, to make money. So, but by seeing more going up there on a faster pace, or let's say less rocket launches to be able to get more into orbit, the original cost of them being placed there will be less. So in totality, it will cost less to run the system, which is really good, not just for SpaceX, but it's good for us. That could possibly make for a lower monthly bill. Now, do I think that 30% increase is going to help a lot? Yes, I do think it's gonna help. Will it be so helpful that it will lower rates? Eh, questionable. But what will possibly lower rates, which will be the version three satellites, that would be 10 times the capacity or whatever, these massive satellites that they will be putting up there by the hundreds, okay, through that Pez dispenser that is at the top of the Starship. Well, when that happens, everything is going to change. I can see that prices will go down from $120 per month, possibly down to $60 or $70 a month. There should be no problem in doing so. And the reason being is the amount of capacity that these will have per unit will be once again, three, four, five times as much of the current capacity of those satellites and the number, the sheer numbers of them that will be placed there per launch. Can you imagine putting 200 of those into orbit using the Starship in comparison to only 29 maximum with the new fairing or the fairing setup? So this is really, really good news. Now, let me just tell you one last thing. This article speaks about the DTC satellites. It doesn't speak on the version two minis. Now, what is the difference? Those DTC satellites are the ones that have the E-node Bs built on board, the ones that are basically cell towers in space. Those, they're looking to move, once again, from that 530 kilometers down to 340 to 360 kilometers. Now, what they've also requested, and I've done a video about this before, is that SpaceX Starlink version two minis, they're trying to move from 530 kilometers down to 400 and let's say 70 kilometers. Not bad, you're looking about 60 kilometers closer. That means once again, lower latency, and you're gonna end up with faster speeds. And most likely they can do it with the current satellites that are up there. Now, remember, as they get closer, they're going to experience more drag. That being the case, they only have a finite amount of fuel to keep them at that orbital height, that altitude. They will be dying out or their end of life will be a lot sooner as they get closer. Now, imagine these DTC satellites that will be at 340 kilometers, 200 kilometers closer. That's going to be a massive difference in the amount of drag. That will cause them to definitely have a shorter lifespan. Now, maybe that is what they're looking to do. Maybe they don't mind if these satellites are only there for maybe two years instead of five years, whatever the case is. I'm not sure the exact number, but a shorter period of time because they have the ability to just launch these things like crazy. So if they end up having a period where there's 50 that go down, literally in two launches, they'll be able to get the 50 back. <laughs> you see? So it is really not an issue for them. It's more about how do they make sure that all of these orbital shells are safe, especially safe for humans, like for example, on the ISS. How do we do it so that it is safe? And that is the difference between what NASA does and what SpaceX does. We really think about what is going on in orbit, okay? We really think about space, whereas a lot of the other countries, they're just launching like crazy. They could care less. It doesn't matter, they blow up a satellite. Eh, the last satellite that blew up just, a, I don't know, a month ago or something, there's like 500 chunks that are just floating now around. It's just a mess, right? Whereas once again, like I said, NASA and SpaceX, they're really trying to make sure that they are good stewards of space or low earth orbit because it is so important. Now, if you remember on a past video, I have spoken about the Kessler effect, right? The idea of, 
collisions in space and what ends up happening if one satellite smashes into another satellite or if a satellite is blown up. What ends up happening, and according to the Kessler effect, is you end up with this chain reaction with one satellite blowing up the next one and then there's more shrapnel, let's call it, that blows up another two and then another four and then eight and 16 and it just exponentiates until basically you end up with a low earth orbit or a LEO that is impenetrable. You won't be able to get through it because there's so much junk orbiting in there, space trash. So it is very important to remain vigilant when it comes to this stuff. And once again, to keep all of the humans that will be in space safe. And that is what they're working on here. So once again, these telcos should be shaking in their boots, seeing that the DTC service will be moving from 500 kilometers, 530 kilometers down to 340 kilometers. <laughs> they just don't know what's coming. And once again, like I said in yesterday's video, I'm gonna be sitting back eating my popcorn and just laughing as they just go bankrupt. They just lose money hand over fist as we move into an era where we are using our cell phones from space and not using them with these towers all over the place. And these telcos have been making so many billions and billions of dollars off our backs. Sorry guys, your time has come my personal opinion. What say you? Down below, I wanna hear your thoughts about all of this. Finally, head over to my website, jchristina.com, where you can find all the photography tools that I've invented for you, and my merch, and my tees, and my shirts, and my books, and everything else. Check them out. Go over to jchristina.com, pick something up. I would really appreciate your support. Many blessings to you and your family. Stay safe, stay healthy, stay connected, and we'll see you in the next one. Love you all.